are you? You know what? I'm doing very well. The last time I came here, I won the Booker Prize. Yes. I bought some Mega Millions. You did? Yeah. So. Oh, for this time, you think yeah. it's going to be the same thing. This is good luck to see me. I, I, I need a New York house. And you need like, a New York, yeah. Well, so. you might need to buy a couple <laughs> Mega Millions. And, uh, <laughs> uh, one, usually one lottery winning will not buy you a house in New York. But uh, you were here in uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. We talked about your book. Uh, you won the Man Booker Prize. Yeah. Did that, was that you uh, posted about it here? I did not know what it looked like uh, until I saw it on your Instagram. Uh, there you see there, and you wrote, uh, holy <laughs> which I think is about right. <laughs> and uh, does that, you know, that's yeah. a big deal in the literary world. It, did it change your life right away? Um, well, it did, because then any rude Facebook post I made became headlines. Oh, I gotcha. Um, I, you know, I went to India, and the whole time I was, I was um, tweeting and Facebooking about how bad the airport was. And by the time I landed, it was Man Booker Prize winner insults India. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's it was not great. On, it was going on for the whole week. The, <laughs> the, the best one was at the end when uh, somebody asked me, how am I feeling about Jaipur? I'm saying, I'm so overwhelmed by India. And the thing is... Marlon James is overwhelmed by India. <laughs> and it was, it seems he's changed his mind about India and the Indians. I'm like, I'm just talking about your airport. <laughs> so, yeah. So I mean, things. New York, if we took it personally, everybody talked about LaGuardia. None of us could live here another day. Yeah, they, I mean, they sued the festival. I was really? gonna, yeah, I was going to go to another, another um, festival, and they were like, you might want to sit that one out for, for a year. Wow, all right. Well, yeah. hopefully uh, you'll be welcome back uh, in India for your next book. Uh, so so this is the first of a trilogy. Yeah. Um, this is already a hefty book. Do you go into knowing that you were going to write, because this is uh, wonderful, it's, uh, mm -hmm. but it's long. Do you know when you embarked? Did you say this is going to be a three-book story? I knew it was a three-book story when I was talking to somebody about this TV show, The Affair. Okay. Um, which That's a funny. Showtime show, The Affair? Yeah, which yeah. I actually haven't seen yet. You haven't um, seen it yet? Okay. But, it's in, but it's in, it was hugely influential. She was... It was a director, and she was talking to me about it and saying, this is a great idea for a TV show. And I was like, forget a TV show. It's a great idea for a trilogy. Um, because in a, in a lot of African storytelling, unlike just storytelling in the West, it's the trickster who's telling a story. So you already know you can't quite believe it. So if I put out three books, which is three different characters telling the same story, by the way, I'm not going to tell the reader which one to believe. They're going to have to choose after a few years. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's going to explode all over Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, some people have called this because, you, as you mentioned, this deals mm. with African folklore. And uh, some people have referred to it as a, sort of an African Game of Thrones. But mm. that actually came from something you said. You know, I said it as a kind of a joke. I was talking to one of your writers backstage. It seems I said it here. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, I, so I said it in this magazine, which I honestly didn't think anybody read. Okay. Um, it turns out all the people who read it are in media. Okay. <laughs> and it got so bad that George R. R. Martin sent me an email. Really? Oh, yeah. Like a nice email? It was a really nice email. Good. It was, you know, it was like, I heard you've written an African version of my book that sounds delightful. <laughs> and, and, and then he invited me out to, to, um, he invited me out to, to his um, bookstore. Oh, that's so, great. Yes, yeah, so I did what every writer would do. I said, so can I get a blurb? Oh, really? Yeah. Did you get him to blurb? No, he wouldn't blurb you. I mean, maybe he just was busy. He I was mean, probably busy. Winter, winter. I, I got to be honest, with all yeah. the writing he needs to do, I don't want him to waste <laughs> any time. If, the, if I heard he was like, oh, I was trying to, but I had to read Marlon's book to blurb him. His big 620-page opus, no. I will say one of the things that I'm going to take away from this is you keep saying things either in interviews or on mm. Facebook and forgetting that people are actually listening to you, and you have to be a little bit more that. careful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, uh, uh, you had to do, obviously, I'm guessing at least, a ton of research in reading this. Yeah. Uh, how do you even go about, how many years does it take to research a book that is yeah. going to be this specific? Well, I mean, it took two years of research, meaning it took two years of my assistant, Jeff, to do all the research. <laughs> okay, gotcha. So wow. this was a Jeff job? Yeah. So what do you do while yeah. Jeff's doing the research? I, you know what? I sit down and I think. <laughs> okay. I think, I'll, I think very hard. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, good. It's, right. it's, 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 but honestly, I also did, I did, I did quite a bit of it. Cause I mean, I, I, I was researching for two years, meaning Jeff was researching it for two years, um, before I even wrote, wrote, um, our life, because I didn't know whose story it was. Mm -hmm. And usually this is what happens when, with stories for me, I am usually talking to somebody, usually, um, a female friend, I get all my ideas from women. <laughs> Um, Not a bad way to go. No, oh, yeah. and there'll say something. I go, that's it. And uh, and when um, you know when my friend said um, you know the, the the whole idea about the affair, and I go, that was it. 
Uh, but until then, I didn't know. And uh, I sat around in my office for a good year. And the idea came the week before school started. So uh, I was like, great, I can write the book. No, I got to teach. Yeah. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> uh, and now, as, uh, have you already moved on to, to the second? Are you, have you, is that possible? Yeah, I've, I've begun with the second. I think, of course, the, the, the person who tells book two is kind of the villain of book one. Okay. So people are already having these emotional attachments to characters. I'm like, you might regret that. All right. I love the, the switching of perspectives. Yeah. You, I know you go to uh, book signings where people come mm -hmm. to have you sign their books, but there, I heard you were late to one of them because you actually got caught oh. up trying to get one of your books signed. Yeah, I, I, so I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of comics. I'm a huge fan of Hellboy. Same here. Great. A fantastic yeah. book. And I had a, it was an L.A. book fair, and I had my own line to add my own book signing, but Mike Mignola is, like, right there. And I'm in this line that's, like, half a mile long. <laughs> And I'm not leaving because I have four stacks of Hellboy. <laughs> he won't remember any of this. <laughs> I'm not leaving because I came all the way from Jamaica with a, with a whole bag. With a bag with a they should have run your line up like sort of perpendicular to his exactly. line. Yeah, they should have. They should have thought this through. Yeah. Um, you uh, now that people have read the book, mm -hmm. you can get feedback. Do you like those moments where people can come up to you and tell you things about? Your book, or are there Not things really, you dread? No, no you no. don't like your book. Yeah. No, yeah. it's it's you know you'll be I'd be at a reading and it would be great, and then you always have the I don't have a question, just a comment, <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, you know what, you can comment forever backstage. Wow. There yeah, you I'm go. pretty good at it now. You're pretty I mean, good. You can shut yeah, it down. I can shut it down. That's good. Um, well, I'm very, uh, I'm just thrilled that you have another one coming. And uh, I really enjoyed this. And in general, it's just wonderful having you back on the show. Thanks it's so, so much great for to be back. Hanging.